Poker Face is a show with a unique concept. Charlie, the main character, can always tell when someone is lying, and she uses this special ability to solve a different murder each week. While this premise is what originally made me interested in the show, I discovered something else that the show does very well, and that is exposition. Quickly, if anyone isn't familiar with exposition, it's basically background information, and it's critical in writing because it helps flesh out the characters and setting of your story. And while little exposition is bad, arguably worse is the exposition dump. This is when too much exposition is delivered all at once in a way that feels unnatural. The worst example of this that I could find was from the movie The Next Karate Kid, and keep in mind this fight is between the main character and her grandmother. Where are you going? Susan! My name is Julie. My mother's name was Susan. She was killed in a car accident with my father and they're both dead. Whenever I see dialogue like this, I always think one of two things. Either the writers are lazy, or they think their audience isn't smart enough to infer things without them being explicitly stated. I have a general rule for whether exposition is good or not, and that's if dialogue feels like something a normal person wouldn't say in that scenario, it's bad. You would think that'd be a pretty easy rule to follow, but as we just saw, that isn't always the case. And yes, I cherry-picked a clip from a movie to highlight exposition dumps, but it's in more shows and movies than you might think. Now, I've already talked up Poker Face's exposition, but before we take a look at an episode of the show to see how they do it, we need to talk about how Poker Face is formatted, because it's a bit unique. Because each week follows a different setting, the first 10 minutes or so introduce the new characters along with their background and how they're related to each other. One of those new characters is murdered, then we discover how Charlie is involved in the whole situation, and the rest of the show follows Charlie as she uses her wits and lie detecting ability to solve the murder. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at one of my favorite episodes, episode 3, The Stall. Just a heads up, we're going to go over the first 5 minutes of this episode, so if I've already convinced you to watch the show and you want absolutely nothing spoiled, then turn off the video now. Alright, this episode revolves around three main characters, Taffy, George, and Mandy. The episode starts out with Taffy talking on the phone in his truck. I just closed on a massive beef rub deal. I got a licensed deal with McCormick. All we need is a few John Hancocks. Do you know who you borrowed from? These are Dallas people. They send someone down to deal with you, they're gonna deal with you. From this short conversation, we learn that Taffy owns some kind of barbecue business since he has a beef rub deal in the works. We also know that he is in debt to some dangerous people, but once his beef rub deal goes through, it seems like he'll be able to repay his debt no problem. We then see Taffy pull up to his barbecue restaurant and we can see through his interactions with various customers that he is very sociable and charismatic. We then get our next bit of exposition. You need to talk to your brother. He's just been standing in the meat locker like some kind of ghost. He's your husband, you know how he gets. This scene just establishes how our three main characters are related. George and Taffy are brothers and George and Mandy are married. Next, Taffy goes to see George. I need out. I'm going vegan, Taffy. George, you're a renowned pit master. Man, you know I can't buy you out. I, I don't save like you. Well, I already spoke to J.J. Ruskin in town, and he could take a look at our books. He'll give us a fair shake. Let me tell you something. I do my books a special way. It's only a certain way I can understand. This is a small scene, but it tells us a lot. The most obvious, George wants to quit the restaurant and go vegan. The pitmaster comment, along with Taffy's interactions with customers, tell us each brother's respective role in the restaurant. George cooks the food, and Taffy handles the business side, taking care of customers and finances. Also, we know that George doesn't know anything about Taffy being in debt since he doesn't mention anything about it, and Taffy freaks out about someone else looking at his finances and tries to make excuses. So Taffy knows that if George leaves the business, then the beef rub deal will fall through, and Taffy will be in a lot of trouble to some dangerous people. At this point, it's only been about three minutes of screen time, but we've met our three main characters, we know how they're related to each other, and we understand the ramifications of George leaving the business for Taffy. The writers have presented all this information in such a short amount of time, but they've wisely revealed information little by little, with realistic dialogue to avoid an unnatural exposition dump like the first clip that we watched. Because of the unique format of the show, quick, well-written exposition is very important, and I personally think that the writers nailed it. But let me know what you think, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. It would really help out. Finally, thanks for watching.